this is the Khmer Times News. My name is Paolo Bonini and these are your headlines. Russia's war rages on, but not all is as it should be. The military dictatorship in Myanmar intends to execute protesters who have spoken against the junta. And a woman who was mutilated in an acid attack makes a heartfelt plea. But first, more from our main story. There has been dissension within the Russian ranks for many weeks and many a telephone call has been intercepted where Russian soldiers complain bitterly to loved ones of poor leadership and dwindling supplies. This view was echoed this week when a battalion commander did the unthinkable. He stepped in front of a camera and delivered a blistering blow to Moscow's elite by protesting shortages of medical supplies, equipment and even food. This is not the first Russian protest of the war. Do you remember this protest when a lady called Maria jumped onto the screen to hold up a sign that said no war? In Russian below it, it says you are being lied to. She was extremely brave, but she did lose her job. This lady is also extremely brave and will hold up a sign that says two words. And that's what the sign actually says, two words. But see what happens. She's immediately arrested because this is seen as a protest against the war. Again, we have a citizen and a piece of paper. But this time, this gentleman has gone a bit further. He has a blank sheet of paper. Look at it. There's absolutely nothing written on it. But in Russia, in these sensitive times, this is perceived as a protest and therefore is illegal. He doesn't say any words. He, he literally does nothing but hold a blank piece of paper. And like the others, he's arrested. So imagine how much bravery it takes for this battalion commander to stand in front of the camera with his paper filled with words that will make his superiors rage with anger. He is saying that whilst his battalion fought in Kherson, they lacked all basic needs to fight, including food, medical support and materials, for which we can assume he means munitions. His troops stand behind him, all are in agreement, and with over 20,000 of their colleagues killed, there are many Russians tired of this war. And these rebellions are becoming a serious issue for the Russian army, as they battle against superior weapon systems and a highly motivated opponent. The Russians are poorly supplied and are simply being outgunned by a superior force. Recent footage from Ukraine shows that the onslaught does not abate. That battalion commander spoke of being poorly supplied and there's a reason for it. Look at this. This enormous explosion is yet another ammunition dump going up in flames. And that explosion was absolutely massive. And to emphasize the problem the Russians have with holding their supplies, here's yet another ammunition dump going up in flames. And these are videos from the past week. These are not archival videos. And the explosion, yet again, is absolutely huge. The true cost of war, though, is men on both sides die needlessly. And as George McGovern said, I'm fed up with old men dreaming up wars for young men to die in. Myanmar is back in the news and yet again it's the military regime's medieval approach to any opposition that has caused a global outcry. After 30 years the military says it will reintroduce the death penalty and execute four people. The Prime Minister Hun Sen has voiced serious concerns 
over this policy. The PM has stated that Cambodia believes that the executions, if carried out, will trigger a very strong negative reaction from the international community. He has said the executions would have a devastating effect on the ASEAN collective. UN special reporters said... The illegitimate military junta is providing the international community with further evidence of its disregard for human rights as it prepares to hang pro-democracy activists. These death sentences handed down by an illegitimate court of an illegitimate junta are a vile attempt at instilling fear amongst the people. The military seized power in Myanmar in February of 2021. Since then, at least 114 people have reportedly been sentenced to death. Last week, the junta announced it would execute four people whose appeals had been rejected following an absurd closed-door trial. They include a former legislator and a veteran activist who was sentenced to death in January on treason and terrorism charges. Also sentenced to death was a former member of parliament with the National League of Democracy, the party of imprisoned leader Aung San Suu Kyi, and a leader of 88 activist group that stood up to the regime's former dictator. The absurdity of these closed trials, of blatantly killing off those who dare oppose, only serves a single purpose. And that is to instill fear into the entire population. The message from those criminals is clear. Fear us. Do not oppose us. Or you will be taken, you will be tried, and you will be killed. The Health Ministry has initiated strict measures this week to prevent monkeypox from being imported. These include screening by health workers at air, sea and land entry ports and mandatory quarantine for those who are infected. Director of Communicable Disease is told the Khmer Times that infected people will have to stay in quarantine for 21 days. There have been over 1,285 confirmed cases reported to the WHO from 28 countries where monkeypox is not usually reported. This represents an increase of 505 cases since the previous outbreak of the 4th of June 2022, when 780 cases were reported. Although this is a significant escalation, a level head must be maintained, as as of the 8th of June this year, there have been no reported deaths. The majority of cases, over 87%, which is 1,112, are from Europe. The second highest is at current America, with 153 cases. Many victims in this outbreak are not presenting usual clinical symptoms for monkeypox, like fever and swollen lymph nodes. What is being discovered are more subtle symptoms, such as a few lesions or even just one singular lesion. And these are appearing in the genital area and are not spreading further. While it is known that close physical contact can lead to transmission, it is not clear as to what role sexual bodily fluids play in the transmission of monkeypox. The WHO expects there will be more cases identified as surveillance expands in all regions and countries. The watchwords are caution and observation as this disease continues its silent march across the globe. I don't think there are many stories that enrage the public more than those of people involved in assaulting others with acid. The pure, unadulterated evil encapsulated in that one single act of permanently disfiguring someone for the rest of their lives is almost beyond comprehension. One victim spoke to us at the Khmer Times and her story is heartbreaking. 
Victims of acid attacks are calling for stronger sentencing. One victim, called Rani, was attacked when her husband threw concentrated acid directly into her face. Her life in that one instance was changed forever. She is impoverished and lives in a small rented room in Phnom Penh. She sat in a solitary chair. Her face deformed and contorted, but the tragic sadness of her life was very apparent when she told us at the Khmer Times, I am so sad. When I look at my face in the mirror, I feel so awful. Sometimes I have to turn away. I just can't look. He had wasted thousands on gambling and sold my land. He had threatened to kill me, and when I was being treated for the acid burns, he continued to make threats. In this case, her husband was sentenced to 10 years in prison, but she is far from happy with that. She said, 10 years in prison is not enough. He should have been in prison for life because he has utterly destroyed my life. I have to work at nights in the factory to make money. My face to this day still hurts and it still needs treatment. I can only work at nights because the sunlight hurts my skin. It is a tragedy on a scale rarely matched. A lady now walks in the shadows of the night as a security guard, earning a pittance. Her face is now deformed and disfigured. She is unrecognisable to herself and can't even bear to look in the mirror. As what looks back at her is the horror of one man's horrific act that destroyed her life. Each year, 400 million people get infected with dengue. About 100 million people get sick and 40,000 die. And it's on the march again. In the first five months of this year, Cambodia detected more than 1,100 cases. An increase of 600 cases. The situation is one for grave concern. The director of the Dengue Fever program said this week that from January to May there were 1,125 reported cases and two fatalities. This is an increase of 625 cases compared with the same period of last year. The director said people must remove all receptacles that can store water and then can hold contaminated mosquito eggs. He said... All objects are a threat, even coconut shells and car tyres. They can store water, and the water collected within is used by mosquitoes to lay eggs, which helps spread the disease. The tiger mosquito is the main agent, has a variety of hosts, including humans, and it feeds not just during the evening, but also during the day. The participation of each community is very important in preventing the disease and stopping a large-scale outbreak. The director confirmed that the increase in dengue fever cases this year was due to climate change and hotter weather. This and increased rainfall made it easier for the mosquitoes to breed. And it is the third year in a row for a large-scale outbreak. Dengue fever victims are very noticeable. They have high body temperatures, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, as well as muscular pains. If suspected, they must go immediately to the nearest public hospital to seek help. And now it's time to look at our sports news. The UEFA Nation League qualifiers are being played and Spain beat the Czech Republic at La Rosalida Stadium to move top of their group. A convincing game by Spain as they held 72% of the possession and won 2-0. The visitors did have their chances, but their strikers failed to convert. Victory for Spain saw them leapfrogging Portugal and that was due to Severich of Switzerland. 
scoring the fastest goal in the nation league's history to give Switzerland victory over Portugal in Group A2. He scored in just 55 seconds, an incredible goal, and it was enough to seal the game and give them the valuable points that they needed. It's time to have a look ahead and see what the weather has in store for us next week. Weather competition time, I want you to pick one day of the week, and if you're lucky, it's that day that it's not raining. Here we go. And if you picked Friday, you're a winner because right across the board, it's rain all the way. We can expect temperatures in the mid-90s. The humidity is going to be 50% and upwards. And it's certainly going to be wet. This has been the Khmer Times News. You can contact myself at the studio by mailing us at ktnewsstudio at gmail.com. Please do subscribe and comment and stay up to date with all the breaking news by following us on both Facebook and Telegram. This has been Paolo Bonini and that was the week that was. I'll see you next Saturday for your weekly roundup.